Now look, I'm not saying that you can't make fun of someone for falling. I'm simply saying that if you're Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville and you decide to tell a reporter, quote, you watch Joe Biden over in Europe, I mean, I'm afraid he's gonna fall down every time I turn on the television, then maybe, just maybe, be certain that there doesn't exist footage of you also falling on your ass, because I'll tell you what, if that footage did exist, it would be pretty embarrassing. Whoops. I think the official recommendation for Tuberville here would be open mouth, insert foot. And look, I hope this puts to rest this really fucking lame talking point that someone falling somehow precludes them from serving for office. So that we're clear, I fall all the time. If falling meant I couldn't be employed, I would be living under a bridge somewhere. And I'm certain that everyone watching also falls more than any of us would like to admit, because let's face it, only a few people out there are elite athletes, and the rest of us are watching our bodies degrade in real time and also forget how to put one foot in front of the other sometimes. It doesn't mean our brains are broken, it just means we're human. And of course, we all know that, and even those Republican provocateurs know that, but still they won't miss a single opportunity to attack Joe Biden, because when it comes to having a modicum of humanity or just launching yet another partisan attack, they'll opt for the partisan attack 10 times out of 10. And of course, the people who exploit the fact that sometimes Joe Biden is a human being and falls are the same people who become awfully quiet the moment their political deity, Donald Trump, does something equivalent or worse. Here are a few recent examples of what I mean. As you know, crooked Joe Biden and the radical left thugs who have weaponized law enforcement to arrest their leading political opponent, and leading by a lot, including Obama. I'll tell you what, you take a look at Obama and take a look at some of the things that he's done. This is the same thing. The country was very divided. And we did with Obama. We won an election that everyone said couldn't be won. We beat Hillary Clinton. Now, you know, I used to, I used to call her crooked Hillary. And look, I get that Trump probably harbors some ill will toward Barack Obama, but fantasizing that he actually defeated Obama in an election is probably a step too far. Here's another one. We have a man who is totally corrupt and the worst president in the history of our country who is cognitively impaired, in no condition to lead, and is now in charge of dealing with Russia and possible nuclear war. Just think of it. We would be in World War II very quickly if we're going to be relying on this. <laughs> and here I was thinking that World War II already happened. And finally, one more. It's less than four months before the season starts. We start in Iowa, we go to New Hampshire, we come down here. You know, the beauty was when I came here, everyone thought Bush was going to win. And then they took a poll and they found out Trump was up by about 50 points. Everyone said, what's going on right here? They thought Bush, because Bush supposedly was a military person. Great. You know what? He was a military. He got us into the uh, he got us into the Middle East. How did that work out? Right. But they all thought that uh, Bush might win. Jeb. Remember Jeb? He used, he used the word Jeb. He didn't use the word Bush. I said, you mean he's ashamed of the last name? And then they immediately started using the name Bush. Never forget it. And look, I get that George and Jeb are brothers, but that doesn't mean that they are interchangeable. And it certainly doesn't mean that Jeb Bush got us involved in the war in the Middle East. And this is just from the last few weeks. I'm not digging into the vaults of history here. We're talking about his quotes from like September. Can you imagine if Joe Biden did any of these things? It would garner wall to wall coverage on Fox and the rest of right wing media. The earth could fall off of its axis. Still nothing would get them to not talk about Biden's gaffes. And let's be clear, that point is so obvious that even Fox's Jessica Tarloff pointed it out on Fox News. And I put together some of Trump's latest cognitive beauties from the last 10 days. He said you need an ID to buy bread. Has anyone shown ID to get Wonder Bread lately? He said that he ran against Obama in 2016. He ran against Hillary Clinton. He warned that Biden will get us into World War II, which I'm pretty sure we already fought and won. And yesterday, he confused Jeb Bush and George W. Bush and said that Jeb got us involved in the Middle East. And then, of course, there are his authoritarian posts on Truth Social calling for the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to be executed and saying that he's going to investigate media companies that he doesn't well, like. You know and can you imagine if Biden said, you know what, I'm going to look into that Fox News. This, they don't seem to like me over there. And look, I'm not looking to get mired in the mud about which septuagenarian or octogenarian politician is too old 
They are all too old. We get it. But what I will do is point out the obvious, glaring hypocrisy of both Republicans and many in the media who relentlessly hammer Joe Biden on his age and his mental acuity and his fitness to serve when those same people are conveniently very quiet when Donald Trump does things that are far worse. Running it as front page news when Joe Biden trips one time, but basically ignoring when Donald Trump thinks that World War II hasn't happened yet, betrays the actual reason that right-wing media is doing this. It's not because of any well-founded concern over Biden's ability to execute the duties of his office. It is just naked partisanship and nothing more. The fact is that if this was actually about Joe Biden's ability to fulfill his duties as president, you don't have to sit around and play doctor. All you have to do is look at how he's been fulfilling his duties as president. I don't need to see the results of Joe Biden's next colonoscopy to be able to see the American Rescue Plan, which saved the US economy after COVID, to see the infrastructure law, which was nothing more than a punchline during the Trump era, to see the gun safety law, the first gun bill passed in three decades, to see the CHIPS Act, which has led to a boom in American manufacturing, to see the PACT Act, which gave desperately needed health care to our veterans, to see the Violence Against Women Act reauthorized, to see a record 14 million jobs added, and the unemployment rate hit a near 50-year low. So again, we don't have to sit around and guess whether Joe Biden is capable of doing the job because he's quite literally already doing it, and arguably doing it more effectively than any other president in modern American history. And look, none of this is to deny the validity of anyone's worries about Biden's age. He's old. Too many of our leaders are old. I get it. But aside from the fact that Biden has already proven that he's up to the job because he's currently exceeding expectations while doing the job, let's also not pretend that we don't know the stakes in this upcoming election. Our elections are binary. They are a choice between two people. As of this moment, it certainly does seem that the choice is going to be between an 80-year-old Joe Biden and a 77-year-old Donald Trump. And I have every ounce of faith in the world that Americans, who, yes, may certainly recognize that Joe Biden is old, will not prioritize that above the fact that his opponent is is a dangerous anti-democratic authoritarian currently contending with four indictments and 91 criminal charges and whose most recent act as president was to incite an insurrection against their own government. So the GOP and their willful accomplices in the media may parrot Republican talking points about Biden's age all day long until they're blue in the face, but we won't be distracted by the same antics that they deployed ahead of 2016. We know the stakes of this election and no amount of right-wing propaganda is going to change that. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.